The scene begins with a flashback, which shows a prep school girl named Abigail, whose father is a senator and mother runs a charitable organization. David needed a newborn baby to accompany him into the future, and he already had one lined up, growing in the womb of Abigail. David and his assistant stand back and watch Abigail play badminton. When David notices this, he asks if she is okay with playing, to which his assistant responds that it is a low-impact sport, and she has only been in three months of pregnancy. David also inquires about the father of the child she is carrying, and his assistant informs him that he was an All-American lacrosse player at Chamberlain last year, and he is currently at Harvard. They also predict that the baby will be born in December, and will then embark on a long trip. Later, David goes to meet Abigail, who reveals that she will name her child as Jason. Unfortunately, Abigail is involved in an accident in Chicago, which results in the death of her baby. Back in the Wayward Pines, Dr. Yedlin informs Xander that he will not be living with Jason in command. As a result, he asks Xander where he stands because he can assist him. When Xander hears this, he assures him that he will not be a problem, and that he is ready to support him but he asks about his plan. At the same time, CJ arrives and asks that Dr. Yedlin accompany him to the mountains. When they arrive at the mountain, Jason informs them that the Abbeys have their leader back and that they can attack the Wayward Pines at any moment. With the Abbeys multiplying outside the fence, Jason decides that the only thing that can be done is to send everyone back to the hibernation chamber from where they were all reborn. Following this, Jason announces to the town people of the threat and reveals that they will be going back to sleep. After listening to this, the residents of the town begin to panic but CJ manages to reassure them that everything is safe. Later, CJ checks the hibernation chambers and discovers that half of them are not charged. According to CJ, half of the hibernation chambers lack the energy required to keep a person alive. Jason inquires as to how many chambers are currently in operation, to which CJ responds, 571. Following this, Jason pays a visit to Dr. Yedlin and instructs him to provide basic medical assessments of the people in Wayward Pines, because the evacuation cannot begin without the report. Dr. Yedlin realizes that they can't take everyone to the hibernation chamber, so Jason is planning to take the physically superior candidates, and leave the rest behind to die. Jason then reveals that not all of the hibernation chambers are functioning properly. He also claims that they will take all of the first generations as well as anyone with skills that can be used to rebuild civilization. He decides to leave the troublemakers and defective people. Hearing this, Dr. Yedlin reminds him of Carrie and claims that she, too, is defective because she cannot have children. Just then, Carrie arrives to inform Jason that Rebecca is waiting for him. As soon as Jason leaves, Dr. Yedlin informs Carrie about the problem in the hibernation chamber and that Jason will not accept defective people, causing her to be broken. Dr. Yedlin then tells her to execute Jason because he is ineffective as a leader. Hearing this, she says she can't do so because he loves her, but Dr. Yedlin claims Jason loves David more. The scene then shifts to flashback when David visits a hospital in Boys, Idaho to obtain another baby to bring with him in the future. When he arrives, he selects a baby, and the doctor insists on meeting with the baby's mother once. It is revealed that the baby's mother is none other than Carrie. Following this, David speaks with Carrie, who tells him about her tragic past when her husband attempted to hurt her. She also expresses her desire to leave Idaho and travel to Istanbul and Paris to start a new life. After hearing all of this, David decides to take her as well to the Wayward Pines. David also decides to slap her photo on top of Abigail's case file, effectively giving her a new life. In the present, Jason is plowing through old files when he comes across a confidential one that says Carrie gave birth to him. When he confronts Carrie about having a baby in her youth, she tells him that David told her to do so, and that David has sent the baby to Texas. Carrie is still unaware that Jason is actually her son. As a result, Carrie is perplexed when Jason asks her about how she knew that the baby went to Texas. Following this, a heated scuffle ensues, during which Jason attempts to draw his gun while Carrie searches for anything within arm's reach to smack him upside the head. Shortly after, as they both fight for the gun, a shot is fired. As a result, both of them are seen lying on a miniature Wayward Pines table model, and the bullet appears to have penetrated Jason's body. On the other hand, the townspeople begin to line up outside the mountain headquarters in order to go back to their hibernation chambers, while the hordes of abbeys prepare to attack now that the female Abby has fully recovered from her wounds. In the next scene, Jason is rushed to the hospital for surgery. Dr. Yedlin is able to extract the bullet from Jason's liver, but he is unable to survive. Following this, Dr. Yedlin reluctantly picks up the leadership slack. He goes outside and delivers a brief speech to the people gathered outside the hospital. He encourages them to fulfill Jason's wish of survival. 
He also says that the wayward pines requires strong leadership, but it does not need a dictator. According to him, despite the fact that only a few people remain, he believes that they will make it to the other side of this, continuing humanity, and that this is their destiny. Later, while performing the post-mortem test, Dr. Yedlin's assistant named Oscar finds out that Jason has a rare blood group that matches Carrie. He finds it to be weird and shares it with Dr. Yedlin. Before the doctor could say anything, CJ summons him and informs him of Jason's plan, as well as his list of who should be taken and who should be left behind. According to Jason's plan, they would first take intact families, including parents and all children, which account for nearly 300 of the 571 hibernation chambers. After that, they will take children while leaving behind the adults who are non-essential. CJ claims that Dr. Yedlin, as a new leader, has the authority to alter the plan. CJ also informs that there are over 300 people who have never been woken at all but he will be granting both a pardon and a death sentence at the same time. Later, Dr. Yedlin goes to Carrie and addresses Jason as a tyrant, but Carrie is still attempting to defend him. Following this, Dr. Yedlin informs her that Jason and she share the same blood type, easily coming to the conclusion that they are not only related, but mother and son. After learning the truth, she vomits in a waste basket. On the other side of the fence, the female abbey has gathered a swarm of abbeys, all of them appearing to be ready to annihilate the wayward pines. Meanwhile, the residents of the town are divided into two groups, Group 1 and Group 2. The list of people in Group 1 are given priority, while the other group is asked to wait behind. Lucy, being a member of the first group, is taken to the mountains, while Frank, being a member of the second group, is stopped behind. As Lucy waits in line for the bus, she calls out to her brother. When Frank hears this, he rushes to his sister but he is caught by a guard who knocks him out. Because Xander is also a member of the second group, he is stopped by the guards, who take only Rebecca with them. Rebecca sobs as she realizes she will be alone for one more time. Xander then reassures her that he will be with her as well as their baby. Both of them exchange an emotional hug and kiss before departing. Outside the headquarters, the residents of the town become aggressive, demanding that the guards let them in. During the process, one of the guards is killed. After witnessing this, CJ fires the gun into the air and orders everyone to go back home. At the lab, Dr. Yedlin records a message on the audio cassette mentioning that David Pilcher was wrong about everything. In an effort to save humanity, he created a town that is ruled by inhumanity. He also mentions that David Pilcher collected several viruses, which were stored in the lab for future germ warfare. He then reveals his plan to inject himself with three of the most virulent strains, bubonic plague, typhoid, and Marburg. According to Dr. Yedlin, after a 13-hour incubation period, he will walk outside the fence and let the abbeys consume him. He estimates that the bubonic plague will wipe out roughly one-third to half of the population of abbeys, and typhoid is water-bearing, as is Marburg, so the rest should follow suit. He really hopes that when the existing members wake up, they will possibly be able to start a new life. Following this, Dr. Yedlin drives to Xander's sugar shack, where Xander and Frank are having a drink. He asks them both to get into the jeep and drive to the mountain. However, they are stopped by a resident holding a Molotov cocktail and claiming that they require the jeep. As a result, Xander shoots at the Molotov cocktail, causing the resident to burn. They then proceed to the chamber room, where Xander reunites with Rebecca and Frank with Lucy. Rebecca expresses her gratitude to Dr. Yedlin for bringing Xander to her. She also encourages him, saying that only he can save the town despite the fact that they were unable to save their marriage. Meanwhile, CJ approaches Carrie and tries to persuade her to start over by entering the chamber, but she decides to sacrifice herself and contribute for the people of Wayward Pines. Later, Dr. Yedlin returns to the lab in order to carry out his plan, but before that, he notices Carrie, who has already injected herself with those virulent strains. She believes that the town and humanity require more people like Dr. Yedlin and fewer people like her son, Jason. Dr. Yedlin provides her with morphine before letting her go reluctantly. Following this, all the people in the headquarters, including Dr. Yedlin, enter the hibernation chamber. CJ is the last to enter, and before he enters, he sees his Eileen in front of him, who lets him know that the choice to wake those people up in the future or kill them now is in his hands. However, it is not revealed whether CJ confirms or cancels the chamber termination. We just see the countdown trickle down to its final seconds on the termination command as CJ gets into the chamber. At last, we see Carrie walk out of the fence. As soon as the fence door shuts, we hear the Abby's snarling voice. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos.